When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. What a blooming mess we find ourselves in. In the past decade, we've had seven chancellors of the Exchequer, six foreign secretaries, four prime ministers, three general elections, two monarchs, a referendum and a partridge in a pear tree. Our democracy is broken. We voted for Boris Johnson to get Brexit done. We got Brexit in name only. The establishment never forgave him for Brexit and the left of the Tory party, along with Labour and the mainstream media, seem to have been campaigning to get rid of him ever since. Partygate seems to have been the straw that broke the camel's back. But let's not kid ourselves. Boris Johnson was not deposed over a cake. And then there was Keir Starmer and Beer Gates. He was found to have done no wrong, but it was a distraction nonetheless that showed us that they are all as bad as each other. The reason the Prime Minister was booted out, the one before lost, not the, current, not the last one to get booted out, is because of Brexit. They wanted to replace him with what they call an internationalist. Rishi Sunak was the favourite, Jeremy Hunt and Penny Mordaunt close behind. And once Boris was out of the way, they thought that Sunak would walk it. Who wouldn't win against Liz Truss and her wooden performances, bless her. However, the blob underestimated just how unpopular Rishi Sunak is outside of their Westminster bubble. The membership voted against him and for Liz Truss's free market economics. Kemi Badnock was the clear favourite, but if we couldn't have a social conservative, we'd at least go with an economic one. But no, the establishment blob had other ideas. The knives were out. The establishment doubled down on implementing their coup, showing a lack of faith in trustonomics, and the market followed suit. If you ask me, the International Monetary Fund went along with the internationalists. Who'd, who'd have thunk that? The markets didn't want to be free. They'd prefer their guy in office instead. They imposed Jeremy Hunt, one of the most unpopular in the party, on trust as her replacement in all but name, reversing all of her policies and undermining her position, making her tenure absolutely untenable. Now that they have got her out the way, you can bet they'll be doing all they can to finally get their man selected. Unfortunately for them, Boris Johnson still holds as much popularity in the parliamentary party as he does in the membership. You see, I think without Boris Johnson, the Conservative Party is bound to be wiped out at the next general election. But perhaps that's what they need. Once destroyed, they can spend some time reflecting, maybe even rediscover their small Conservative roots. Or perhaps not. And another more Conservative Party could rise up in the wake like a phoenix from the ashes. Either way, I think the British public deserves better than what these ambitious careerists have to offer. It's high time we returned some public servants to Whitehall. British democracy needs fixing. We've given this lot a go, and look where it's got us. Is now the time to say enough is enough? Is it possible to make the Conservatives conservative again? Or are we ready to try something different?